Fear of unknown, uncertainty. See life from a bigger perspective. Is this the first time you are having the fear? No. no. You have had it before? How did you overcome that? If you are worried today, you look back and see five years back, didn't you worry? Ten years back, you worried. Fifteen years back, you were in worry. You are still alive, you have come over all that. <laughs> so this looking at your own life pattern will give you confidence. I have had this many times, okay, I'm, I'm, I'll move through that. One way is to see this tough situation will pass, it won't stay, number one. Second thing is to say, everything changes, this will also change. A third is your own experience. You have the energy, courage, strength to handle it. Fourth is there is a greater power. What you cannot do by your effort, you can do by prayer. So you know you are not alone, there is a higher power which is helping you, protecting you, which is guiding you by hand. Have faith in that. Any of the four you take. See, so if you don't believe in anything, it's hard to say that I am a no believer of anything. I don't believe in anything. At least you are believing in what you are saying. <laughs> and just know who you are. You are not the body, you are not the mind, you are not the thoughts, you are not the emotions. Then when you go on this journey of finding who you are, you find a huge ocean of energy within you. I say, wow. And you feel such connection with the entire cosmos. And you get, oh my God. That is Shambho. And I say, Shambho, Shiva. When you, your words fail, you are in wonder of union with the whole universe. The drop feels it's part of the ocean. Then the drop has no fear of extinction. If a drop is on a plate in the sun, under the sun, it just few moments only it can stay. But if it's part of the ocean, ocean never dries. That sense of connectivity with the infinity makes a huge difference. It changes life. How do you deal with an overinflated ego? When I'm meditating, I feel, oh, I'm better than everyone else. I meditate. Why do you want to get rid of ego? Tell me. Because I you were told ego is bad. Yes. Right? Yes. I tell you, ego is good. Keep it. <laughs> in your ego, just include everybody. <laughs> Instead of saying I, we. That's it. Trying to get rid of ego is the biggest problem we have. It's like trying to chase a cat in a dark room where it is not there. You have overcome your ego. That's a bigger ego. Correct? So I tell you, just be natural. Don't worry. If you find you have an ego, keep it in the pocket. <laughs> Don't have to show it all the time. Okay, sometimes you can show it. <laughs> it's okay to have ego. See, we have this run. We have been forced to think, oh, you have to be perfect, you have to be perfect, you have to be perfect. And then in that run of being so perfect, so correct, we become imperfect. Actually, so what? It's okay to be imperfect. Ah, by the way, this is only for those who are extremely perfectionist. <laughs> People who are perfectionist, they get annoyed very often and very soon. You get upset very soon because you see imperfection in others, you can't handle it, you can't tolerate that. That's the nature of perfection. Perfection cannot tolerate imperfection anywhere around or in others. But that becomes a noose around our own neck. We get so stressed out and we become even more imperfect than the so-called imperfect people. And then we keep getting angry every day. You know what anger is? It's a punishment you give to yourself for someone else's mistake. Today somebody did a blunder and you got angry. When you get angry, your brain is boiling, your nervous system is taking a toll of it, your BP is rising, your sugar levels are going up, your endocrine system is going nuts. So your whole system is rattled, your sleep is gone, your appetite is gone, or you simply keep stopping yourself. It takes a big toll on your health. So anger is the punishment you have given to yourself. And so today someone did a mistake, you punished yourself. Another day another person did a mistake, you keep... And you keep punishing yourself all the time. <laughs> Don't be too hard on yourself, I tell you. Just by you are getting annoyed, things are not going to change. Correct? Do they change? It doesn't change. We had to see the whole situation from a broader perspective. And then you see why people do mistakes, because they are not 
as evolved as you are. They are not uh, as informed or educated as you are. They are not as civilized or cultured as you are. Period. Then give them time to grow up, educate them and ignore. That's my formula, you know. Not keep quiet. If someone does a mistake, educate them. If they don't learn, ignore. <laughs> what else can you do? Don't punish yourself, I tell you. This one thing if you all take with you today, that you are not going to punish yourself for whatever somebody else does it, then I tell you, no one can take away the smile from you. You can keep smiling even in the toughest moments of life. And I see that is the achievement in life. If at all you say there is one achievement, your ability to smile at any time. Is there a purpose for human existence? Why do we have to look into that? Can't we just accept life as it is? Why do we want a purpose behind everything, cause for everything? What is the purpose of having a soccer game? What's the point? So many people getting into that st stadium and few of them kicking the ball from this side to that side, everybody else yelling and shouting and crying. What is the game? If an alien happened to drop into our world and he finds these people going crazy in a stadium over soccer, he thinks these are all nuts. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't make any sense. See, game is a game. You can't make sense out of a game. Correct? So, music, dance, like that life is mystery and mysteries are not to be understood but to be lived fully. So, if we keep putting our head and keep wondering what is life, what is life, what is life, it's okay. It can take us a little deeper and it leaves you with no answer. But, and if you get some answer, I tell you it's totally wrong. Because one who knows will never tell you, and anyone who tells you, they don't know you, know it. <laughs> this very question can be a vehicle for you to travel in far. And that's it. That's the purpose of it, the question. But it will turn into wonder, wow, wow. Why do people become like perfectionists? Like, they, they, they always want perfection. So you have a nice coat on you? Thank you. Suppose the tailor doesn't make that coat as nice as you want it to be. Do you like it? Well, I'll accept it that they try their best. <laughs> yeah. See, when it concerns us, we want everyone to do perfect things for us. Correct? Yes. Yeah. And so, it's natural for us when we take responsibility to do things much better. But then, suppose it is not that way. I'll give you one example. A lady made a beautiful cake, Christmas cake, big cake, but she forgot to put cherries on the cake. Everyone came, they cut the cake, they enjoyed the cake, but she was so unhappy because she forgot to put the cherry on the cake. <laughs> so I said, the cherry can take away your happiness, but everybody else is enjoying, who bothers about the cherry? <laughs> we should not be too much hung up on perfections. Yeah? I don't mean we should not have perfection at all. That will be a chaos, it will be disaster. Uh, how do I deal with people who are following different paths, who say this is the only God, my guru is the only guru? <laughs> See, it's okay, everybody has right to air their opinion. Why you want to change that? Some people are very close-minded, then you know, what to do? But I tell you, the truth, that which is real, will always stand up. Some things that are Mediocre will fall off.